What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles submitted to the channel by PokeboyGod18, running Shadow Reuniclus in the Open Great League. Now honestly, this Pokemon isn't very good, but they picked up a good IV one from the recent Team Rocket event and gave it a try anyways. Weirdly, they managed to get Psychic Hidden Power, which if you didn't know, you can't actually change the typing of Hidden Power. Once you get a certain typing, you're stuck with it. Now having Psychic Hidden Power kind of feels like it defeats the point of having Hidden Power, but you do at least get stabbed, and it is a much better fast move than Zen Headbutt, although that's not really saying much. This trainer ran it with Shadow Galvantula in the lead, Shadow Hypno as a safe swap and damage sponge, and Reuniclus as a closer. So with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. Hidden Power is the most unique fast or charge move in the entire game, but unfortunately doesn't see any play outside of very limited metas, like for example, Luxray having Hidden Power ground in the Electric Cup. But I want to know, how would you change Hidden Power to make it more viable? without it becoming broken for certain Pokemon or certain metas? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle lead into Licky Tongue. So this is a fairly neutral matchup for us. Of course, Licky Tongue, you're gonna be winning most neutral matchups, but we would prefer to see it here. Now I realize this is about the fourth time I've tried to record this. For some reason, this trainer has edited out all the bubbles part of like the swiping for the charge move animation. So this seems like it's really, really fast paced. It is only two times speed, which is typically what I do for these videos, but it just seems so hard to commentate over. So apologies if I get my tongue twisted even more so than I normally do, but it's very hard to keep up. But anyways, they go for a sky attack, taking us out. Unfortunately, the Volt Switch doesn't quite take them out there. Brave Bird will be taking us out, and now it's all up to Reuniclus. What can it do in the end game? We've got a shield advantage, which is probably going to be necessary as Reuniclus is pretty bad, but we get the full hidden power farm down, and they've got a Polyrath in the back, so the opponent is just barely going to outpace us to a charge move. Icy Wind going to drop our attack, but it doesn't matter as the Future Sight takes out the Polyrath and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we're going to see a bit of a core breaker to this team. Obviously, Galvantula, fairly neutral matchup, but they will outpace us to the charge moves. So we're going to be shielding up the Ice Punch here. We're now going to overfarm just by one, go for a lunge there, getting the debuff to their attack, and then we come in with the Hypno. Of course, these Shadow Claws are hitting for super effective damage, but Hypno fairly bulky. They full send a Drill Run, which is a little bit unnecessary. We go for the Thunder Punch there, grab a shield from the opponent, and at this point, we're going to let the Hypno go down. We come back in with the Galvantula, and they come in with a Polyrath. So Polyrath is straight in and straight out. Get that Polyrath off my screen, as Jamie Finn would say. The opponent is waiting at the switch clock. They're going to come in with a Shadow Venusaur and look at that hidden power damage. Honestly, you'd think that's double super effective, but of course we know it isn't. It's just going to be the psychic hidden power. We get the full farm down and the opponent is just going to concede the match there. So going into the next battle, we see Sir, uh, Sir Titan in the lead, which is a very spicy pick from the opponent. I have never faced one before. And the opponent's going to go for that body slam straight away, so we can just safely shield this up before we want to go and debuff their attack. But the opponent actually swaps into a Shadow Dragonair. Lunge does big damage, and it puts them into range where we can fully confusion, farm them down. They come back in with the Sir Titan. We're able to make it to the Thunder Punch for whatever reason we've left this bubble swiping in. Uh, not really sure why. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense there. But anyway, maybe that is the end of the editing of the bubbles maybe it's going to go back to normality as we get the full confusion farm down they come in with salazzle we're going to go for another thunder punch here and maybe maybe i can just commentate this normally now as we can come in with our reuniclus and the opponent is just going to concede the match there so going into the next battle, we're going to see Skarmory in the lead. So this is a great lead matchup for us. The opponent safe swaps into Shadow Quagsire. We're just going to fire off the lunge here. What this is going to do is allow our Hypno to have a much better time. Honestly, we can just tank whatever they throw, go for a full Confusion farm down. And the great thing about having Hypno here is that even though, of course, uh, we're not going to be doing that good up against Skarmory, we've still got Thunder Pudge for coverage. So it doesn't really matter that we've used some of the energy from our Galvantula. We can now fire off a Thunder Punch, grabbing a shield from the Skarmory. They will get the full Steel Wing farm down, but we still got both our shields in play and we go for the extra Volt Switch. So I really like this play. The opponent going to go for a Brave Bird full sending it there and then they come in with a Shadow Dragonair. So going straight for the lunge. This should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent and now we come in with our Reuniclus. Now we've got to be very careful here just because they do outpace us to the charge use quite significantly and of course if we throw a charge move straight away, which we do end up doing, this looks like a CMP tight as well 
well. But unfortunately, Shadow Ball, whilst yes, it will take them out, it gives them an opportunity to get a huge Steel Wing farm down, and they're literally going to come out with the perfect farm down there to fire off a charge move into our Galvantula. Brave Bird takes us out, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. So honestly, not really sure what we could have done there. Maybe could have undercharged that Shadow Ball and then got the Volt Switch farm down up against the Dragonair. I'm not too sure. But anyways, into the next battle. We're going to see Golbat in the lead there. The opponent is going to fire off a Shadow Ball, then swapping into Lantern. We've got back-to-back -back lunges already loaded. So we fire off the first one. Doesn't get shielded. The second one probably is going to grab a shield here. And then we will, of course, swap into a Hypno. They are double debuffed in their attack. So, of course, even a Thunderbolt isn't going to do an awful lot of damage. They go for the Thunderbolt there. We can go for a full confusion farm down and it's probably not going to be the goal back coming back in as it doesn't have a great matchup but even Skarmory up against a loaded Hypno with uh, with Thunder Punch sorry is going to do very poorly here so we're already at the back to back Thunder Punches the second one coming through grabs the final shield from the opponent they still can't go for a full farm down so the opponent does throw their energy Sky Attack will be taking us out we can come back in with the Galvantula and we're actually going to swap into our Reuniclus here and are we going to no shield this? No, we're going to shield anyways. They go for sky attack. They're going to swap back into Golbat, but it doesn't matter as we get the hidden power farm down and the opponent just concedes the match there. So going into the next battle, we see Shadow Galvantula into Talonflame. So we're going to go for two Volt Switches. I really like this play just because, of course, throwing two Volt, switch, it's, uh, two Volt Switches and then swapping out means we only take Incinerate damage once there as we do swap out before the second Incinerate damage registers, which, of course, being super effective up against the Galvantula, we don't really want to tank. But anyways, we swap into our Hypno. Not really sure why we went for Thunder Punch there, but I guess what it does do is allow us to get the full farm down after we land the Thunder Punch. Now they come back in with the Talonflame we're going straight for a thunder punch this should be grabbing a shield and unfortunately we don't get the new mechanic there so we don't get off the next charge move the opponent i believe is at 100 energy so we get the volt switch through and now we can fire off the charge move on the cmp tie we go for lunge because even from this range double resisted it would ko and we also drop their attack so the opponent will still get off a flame charge once again taking us out there but we come in with reuniclus and what do they have in the back unfortunately it's a shadow and frost and whether they're running brutal swing or just thunder the punch honestly both will take us out from this range but brutal swing certainly gets the ko as it is super effective and unfortunately we do lose that game but in today's battle, we're going to see Scarberry in the lead once again. And the opponent's going to say swap into Altaria. So interesting team here. Double flying so far. We go for the discharge. Getting a little bit of chip damage there. Honestly gets them into the yellow health range already. And Hypno is very bulky. We can tank this pretty comfortably. And hopefully we can still go for a full confusion farm down. And we do get the farm down. But not only that, we come out with two Thunder Punches loaded. So if they come back in with the Skarmory, they're going to have to tank two more Thunder Punches. So we go for the first one here. The opponent is going to be no shielding the first one are they going to fully sacrifice the skarmory or will they shield the second thunder punch they are going to fully sacrifice it and then they come in with a lantern so things look pretty good for us right now they do get the spark farm down unfortunately they do make it to another charge move or sorry the first charge move before we do make it to that first launch but that's absolutely fine i think the right play here is just to stay in with the galvantula fire off both lunches before eventually swapping out but actually no we're not going to do that we come in with reuniclus they're only, they are only single stage debuffed so so that Thunderbolt actually does quite a decent amount of damage. It puts us into Spark Farm down range. But I think we are just one bolt to shoot away from the next charge move. So it doesn't really matter. Even if they've got back-to-back -back moves, we should get the fast move through here. But we actually don't. We don't get that move through. And unfortunately, that's going to cost us the game. That is so unfortunate. Now, I know a lot of people that complain about one turn bringing a uh, one turn lag when you bring your Pokemon in there. I've actually never really experienced it too much until yesterday. I had it three times in one game and it was the most frustrating thing ever. So, uh, yeah, really annoying that we don't win that game there. We should have definitely won that, but... Into the next battle, we're going to see a Cradilly in the lead. So we go for lunge. We're now going to swap into our Shadow Hypno as we always do once we get off that debuff. And the opponent comes in with Polyrath, the most questionable answer to our Hypno they could have possibly brought in. As they go for an Icy Wind, doesn't do much damage. It drops our attack, but that's okay. And now they come in with Skeledurge. So yeah, really not sure why they went in with the Polyrath there. They also no shield the Shadow Ball. Yes, that was debuffed, but it still hits incredibly hard. We're able to make it to a Thunder Punch, grabbing that final shield 
shield. And at this point, we can come in with our Reuniclus. We are going to no shield this. The opponent is just going to go for a disarming voice, not even going for the Shadow Ball. And now this is game over. We can just safely let this move go through. I believe Galvantula does have a charge move loaded. So we go for the lunge. And lunge, of course, from this range. Here's for super effective damage. It takes that Cradilly, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we see a Shadow Giraffic in the lead. They are running Confusion, so they're hitting incredibly hard. We try to swap and catch a Psychic Fangs there, but the opponent doesn't throw straight away. So this is still going to be a Psychic Fangs, though. We do manage to correctly call that, and we can go for a Thunder Punch. Now, Thunder Punch not going to do much damage in this matchup, but of course, Shadow Ball is resisted, so it just makes sense to go for that Thunder Punch straight away. The opponent goes for Crunch, taking us out. And remember, we do have a Lunge already stored on our Shadow Girl Vangela, so I would imagine we're going to overfire by one volt switch go for the lunge here and lunge from this range it should be enough damage to get rid of that drapeon they come back in with giraffe rig we're going to swap into reuniclus and we're actually going to shield this time around the opponent is going to go for another psychic fangs they come in with polyrath though so this is good for us or at least it should be good for us but you can see after they've dropped our defense honestly we're taking a lot of damage from these counters so we are going to be shielding up this charge move they go for icy wind honestly they're going to outpace us to the next charge me before we get the full farm down there that's really unfortunate icy wind will be taking us out we come back in with galvantula we get the volt switch farm down and it's a simultaneous ko, ko there and we're able to get that tie so going into the next battle, we see Quagsire in the lead. Now, the opponent doesn't actually farm up to a Stone Edge, but we're still going to shield anyways. It's just a Mud Bomb. Honestly, could have let that go through, but of course, we don't know what the team is. We also need to kind of keep our lead alive, given that we haven't swapped out of this matchup yet. And there is a Mandibuzz in the back. So, of course, it is very useful to keep a Galvantula alive when Mandibuzz is in the back. Of course, it's great to bait it out here, but unfortunately, that Dark Pulse does so much damage that they put us into perfect farm down range for Snarl. We should make it to back to back thunder punches, but this won't threaten a shield and they can go for a huge farm down in this matchup and come out with a ton of loaded energy. Now, unfortunately we weren't quite at a charge move just yet. So we come in with Galvantula. Dark Pulse does huge damage there, but we do get the farm down. Now, we have a lunge loaded. We're probably gonna come back in with the Quagsire. So we fire it off straight away. Lunge should be grabbing a shield. No, they actually no shield that. So we swap into Reuniclus and unfortunately they got Pidgeot in the back. I think the only win condition here is if the opponent goes for a Feather Dance straight away. But they're actually running aerially, so unfortunately not a lot we can do here. We're going to go for a future site. Hopefully they just let this go through, but very unlikely. They end up shielding and we're just going to concede the match there. So going into the next battle, we see Skarmory in the lead. So great lead for us. The opponent's going to say swap into Shadow Dragonair. Now we come in with our Shadow Hypno. We should be able to win this matchup just because we are slightly bulkier. You can see Confusions have already chunked them a little bit more than the Dragon Breath damage, but we still have to throw a charge with here. Otherwise, we would go down two shields in this matchup, which we certainly don't want to do. Now the opponent is happy to let Dragonair go down. They're going to take that shield advantage and come in with Skarmory and hopefully for them at least, not for us, go for a huge Steel Wing farm down. So we go for the Thunder Punch. They do no shield that though, which is quite nice for us. We put them into range where hopefully we can just fully farm them down. We're going to come in with the Shadow Galvantula, go straight for the lunge and the opponent no shields. That's huge for us because now we can come in with Reuniclus, just no shield everything they possibly throw. They go for Aquatel because of the debuff to their attack. A second Aquatel won't quite take us out here but we can't make the same mistake as last time i love this play not throwing any fast moves straight away giving skarmory only one steel wings worth of energy and now we should be able to go for a volt switch farm down here let's see they go for the sky attack can we get the farm down in time yes we're able to do so and we're able to take that game so really nice end game play there from this trainer. Into the next battle, we're going to see a Alola Ninetales, oh sorry, a Shadow Ninetales in the lead. We're going to say swap into Hypno. The opponent banks a ton of energy and then comes in with Cresselia, maybe hoping to catch a charge move, but all they end up doing is having to shield a Shadow Ball. And now we're going to overfarm in this matchup, committing to another Shadow Ball and we get there in time. This also looks like a CMP tie. The opponent no shields on the Cresselia. And at this point, we're happy to let the Hypno go down. Grass Dot will be taking us out from this range. We can come in with the Galvantula and the opponent does make it to another charge move. Hopefully this is just another Grass Knot and it is the Grass Knot, so we do of course resist that. We also come out with a Discharge Loaded, so gonna throw this straight away. The opponent is going to, uh, sorry, they do shield that 
And we're going to fully sacrifice the Galvantula now, putting both our shields and all of our faith into Reuniclus. Unfortunately, they do end up... Um, Denying a fast move there, which doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. We have missed out on a few fast moves throughout this video, so that is definitely not ideal for us. We're going to have to double shield here, and the opponent comes in with Azumarill. Now, we could probably nuke a few th a few Pokemon, but unfortunately, Azumarill isn't one of them. That Future Sight still does huge damage, but unfortunately, it does tank it. It makes it to a charge move. Ice Beam will be taken out Reuniclus, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. Into next battle, it is the battle of the bug and electric type Pokemon. Looks like the opponent is lagging there, but nope, it looks like they've caught up. That's very strange, so maybe just this trainer doesn't have the best connection. I'm not really sure, but either way, we're going to go for a lunge here, and I think the opponent's probably caught up by now. We're going for the lunge. The opponent is going to no shield. We're going to go for another lunge here, and we throw on a CMP type as well. So lunge number two grabs the shield. At this point, we can tank this uh, fairly comfortably as well. They go for discharge, which makes no sense whatsoever. Honestly, I don't know if the opponent was thinking maybe we're going to try and make a catch there. Not really sure, but either way, we can just shield, go for the switch farm down and they come in with a lantern so gonna go for a lunge here i wouldn't be surprised if we farm up to the nut the next lunge and then either throw it or just swap out we actually swap out instead so i like that play it could be useful for us but let's see the opponent goes for a surf and the opponent is going to stay in with their lantern here so they are debuffed these surfs they're not going to deal that much damage here they go for the second surf and they're still staying in so we're going to now fire off a shadow ball shadow ball will be coming through shadow ball will be taking out the lantern and they've actually got Obstagoon in the back, so I've got literally no idea why they didn't swap into Obstagoon. Maybe thinking we might be running Focus Blast. I'm not really sure. Shout out to Home Slice Henry as we've just got a YouTube notification from this trainer on the screen. But we can go for the lunge, which we did bank, taking out Obstagoon and Reuniclus <laughs> doing literally nothing in that battle. Honestly, it did just about as much in that battle as it has done throughout the entire video, if I'm going to be honest. But into the next battle, another Licky Tongue in the lead. We're going to shield up the first Body Sam, and we can now go for a lunge. Now we will make it to two lunges on the CMP tie with the next body slam and the opponent doesn't throw straight away so this lunge will probably connect the opponent lets it go through and once again gonna swap into our shadow hypno and just sponge this energy the opponent is gonna go for a body slam this time around doesn't do much damage after we have double debuff them and let's see the opponent's gonna come in with a talent flame so just gonna throw that thunder punch straight away thunder punch will hit for super effective damage it grabs a shield from the opponent and at this point are we gonna shield here we are going to shield shield but will the opponent just swap out of this matchup after boosting their attack the answer is no we can just go for that thunder punch and from this range thunder punch takes out the talent flame they've got a whisk cash in the back so we're going to swap into our shadow galvantula basically just force the opponent to throw their energy not allowing them to get a huge mud shot farm down up against the hypno and hopefully reuniclus can somehow win this game here i'm assuming we can live a school from full health here so we should be able to take this but let's see the opponent is going to throw the first charge move hopefully this isn't a blitz Blizzard. It is just a scold, but they're able to outpace us to the next charge with Reuniclus. You had one job, man. And now, unfortunately, we come in with the Hypno and we lose CMP as well. I think, honestly, if we went for the charge move one fast move sooner, I don't think they were in Thunder Punch range anyway, so I think we would have lost anyways. But into the next battle, we're going to see Registeel in the lead. This is actually fairly decent for us. We do resist everything Registeel is typically going to run, unless they're running Hyper Beam, which is quite unlikely. So we're going to no shield here, and Zap Cannon even resisted does like 80% of our health. That is crazy. But even with a debuff, we should be able to take them out with this second discharge. So discharge grabs that shield. We then swap at the exact same time as the opponent. And this isn't ideal for us, but it, it is slightly better than them farming our, farming down our Galvantula. And we also call a Bone Club bait, which is huge. And now we can go and full send the shadow ball the opponent no shields we take out the marowak and they've got a wiggly tuff in the back so if we can grab a shield here reuniclus should be able to take this game but honestly after that last game up against the wish cash i am very skeptical but let's see we're going to wait out the switch clock here. We are going to swap and we make a catch. So surely Reuniclus is going to be able to sweep this game here. They go for Icy Wind. They do undercharge. That is the correct play. So nice play from the opponent. 
And the opponent is going to swap into Registeel. The safe play here is just to double shield if they make it to back-to-back -to -back charge moves and go for a full resisted hidden power farm down. And then we will come out with a future sight loaded. So let's see. We go for the future sight. I did think, are we going to go for the BM Shadow Ball play? But no, future sight takes out the Wigglytuff and we're able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member. Your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.